So you're very much welcome and to uh, all our dignitaries on the platform. I am I'm sure I'm alive that uh, would be aware that uh, Ambassador Maria has uh, colleagues from Geneva. So you are also much welcome to join the great platform. So ladies and gentlemen, today we have a great topic and a great panelist. And I want to begin by introducing um, Her Excellency, uh, Emilia Mukusa. Emilia Mukusa is the ambassador of Namibia to the Federal Republic of Ethiopia and permanent representative of AU and the United Nations Commission for Africa. Prior to that, she was the secretary to the National Council of Namibia, the Namibian Parliament House of Review from June 2015 to November 2018. Before her appointment to the National Council, she was the Director of Administration at the Ministry of International Relations and International Relations of Namibia from September 2013 to May 2015. From August 2000 to August 2013, she served as the National Assembly of Namibia as Deputy Director and Director of Administration, as well as a Director in the Office of the Speaker. Prior to that, she's also a distinguished diplomat, career diplomat. So prior to that, between December 1990 to July 20, 2000, how many people were born in 1990 here? I guess there are few. Uh, Ambassador Mukusa served in various positions within the Minister, Ministry of International Relations and Cooperation. She also served as the second secretary at the Namibian Permanent Mission in New York, where she's, she was responsible for the 50th Committee and the Committee on Conferences at the United Nations, October 1995 to January 1999. During her time in New York, she also served as a, a rapporteur for the Committee on conference, Conferences 1997 as well as the working group on the financial situation of the United Nations. While working in the office of the speaker, 2006 to 2013, Ambassador Mukosa, um, Mukosa serves, serves as the technical leader of the speaker, um, rehab campaign of the EPU presidency in 2008 and his tenure at as a PU president for 2008 to 2011. Um, Pastor also served on various public sector committees from 2002 until 2018. She share, okay, some like kind of sparing me, but okay. She served, she has diverse knowledge and experience in human resources management and uh, development financial uh, management, parliamentary services, diplomatic practices. But on top of that, she's a bachelor's hold in business administration from the University of Namibia. Anyone from the University of Namibia? Um, and now, uh, yes, Namibia, now Namibia University of Science and Technology and Executive Development Certificate from the University of with waters and I guess in South Africa. So that's her profile. So I want to welcome Ambassador Emilia to say a few words. If I've missed out, you wanna make uh, our people know about that. So thank you so much, you're much welcome. Uh, thank you, thank you, Enoch. Uh, thank you for welcoming me and uh, good evening to everyone on the platform. Uh, it's quite an honor to have been uh, invited um, to, to, to present um, something on, on, on uh, 21st century youth. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited uh, to, to, to engage you on that. So I think for now, uh, you have covered everything. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad I covered it, didn't miss anything. So let's go to the topic today. The topic today is generating leaders fit for the 21st century Africa. And I set out a few questions, guiding questions, but let's begin from just basic. 
what does leadership mean to you? Who is a leader? Who is a perfect leader? Just from the message, who is a perfect leader to lead uh, people in the 21st century Africa? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's, it's a very loaded question because there are different types of leaders uh, that you find. Uh, so, and uh, I, would, I would say a leader is that person that uh, takes particularly the young ones uh, by the hand and, and, and groom them and, and ensures that um, the, you just do not work, but you also get the leadership skills that is required for you to, um, uh, to carry out your, your, your responsibility. Um, a leader's role is kind of connected to some, um, it's kind of connected to some uh, kind of political climate of an organization. Uh, and it all depends uh, from where you are. And, and uh, it, it, it also colorate, colorates uh, uh, closely with uh, some leaderships uh, as it influences the procedures and, and decisions of a leader. Uh, directly for that matter. Um, and also in most cases, uh, leaders have, have a profound influence on, on, on employees or followers uh, uh, besides helping them uh, uh, better their workplace or, or, or related challenges. Uh, leaders also evoke innovation and creativity and inspires employees to reach their full potential. Um, but you also find uh, influential leaders, uh, influential leaders who influence others to achieve effective results. Uh, employees choose to follow uh, uh, that, that leader very often. And um, it is also uh, uh, said that employee, uh, employees, when they follow them, uh, 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 they play sometimes uh, politics within the workplace. And if you play politics within the workplace, of course, sometimes it does uh, affect your, your, it does affect your, 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 your attention to work. Uh, and, and one of those influential leaders that, that actually comes to mind is, is, is um, President Nyerere, the former president, late president of, of, of Tanzania, who influenced, um, you know, 120 tribes and uh, you influence 120 tribes to speak the same language, which is Kiswahili. Uh, 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 and also he united Tanzania uh, you know, Zanzibar as well as Tanganyika, and, and also uh, uh, um, created the nationhood uh, within Tanzania that, that we know today. So I yeah. think that is, that is the leader, yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you. Oh, we are so fortunate also to, to have our another panelist. Uh, I think had some network issues joining. So sorry, Mr. Diodene Nahimana, I introduced uh, Ambassador Melia before. So, but we are glad to have you. So thank you for joining us. So I want to introduce to uh, Mr. Nahimana. Mr. Nahimana is the, is the founder of New Generation Burundi, a nonprofit organization that helps young leaders, uh, young people gain leadership skills, but also doing charitable work to him. The main mission is to empower uh, young leaders have, you know, organize their future, have vision, set goals, but for a better Africa and better Burundi. So thank you so much. But besides, that, he's also a former presidential candidate. Uh, just concluded the election in Burundi 2020. I think he, he was an independent presidential candidate. So glad to have you and you are following your MS. Um, experience in leadership and the young people, the reason why I reached out to you is because you have influenced many young people in the region and I guess you have a lot to talk about leadership. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. So yeah, uh, I was asking what is leadership? Like in, a, in before even diving into main questions of today, in your own, like from the best, who is a leader? 
what's the leader? Because many people think leadership is being a president, a prime minister, a CEO. Who is the leader here? The question is to me now. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. good. Uh, uh, I think I always start by saying that uh, um, a leader is someone who can inspire people to dream and to have uh, um, hope for the future, who give them, who give them the capacity to, to see beyond the circumstances they are going through. And then they can have a, a better uh, uh, picture of the future. But um, we talk about influence, but I much more talk about to have an influence and to inspire, to inspire, to give uh, a message which help people to see their lives become better than it was before. Uh, this is how I describe someone as a, a leader, is someone who have a really, who inspire people, who invest in people, who give them the possibility to see the potential in them. Perfect. So the same, the same. Uh, yeah, I think you agree with the um, verse they mail, yeah, define that potential to see. Okay, so we have defined leadership. Everyone is aware who is a leader. So uh, just to remove that, a leader is not a person who holds position, is anyone who can influence <laughs> and provide responsibility to community. I want to go back to Ambassador Melia. So for you, you are a leader, but also a political one. And a, a political one. So I want to know, what is the relationship between uh, politics and leadership? Which one influences the other? Uh, I think politics influences uh, leadership um, yeah. simply, because, simply because sometimes, uh, not sometimes, but if you are a, a most of the leaders that we have in, in actual fact uh, are political leaders and yeah. the decisions they take are also influenced by the by by the uh, by their political uh, ideologies so um, i would say yes uh, politics influence leadership okay politics influences leadership i want yes. to whether my miss adio then agrees to that uh, for you you uh, by the i forgot to mention that he's also a spiritual pastor on top of the, the, the leadership He's also a spiritual pastor. So how do you uh, relate, you know, spiritual, spirituality, leadership, but then you went to politics. How does that, how, what does it, what influences the other? I think the most important thing is to have the, the, uh, the good definition of what it is, politics. And on my understanding, politics is that, um, it's much more kind of how you make decision to manage and to organize the community to, co to organize the society. And um, I think uh, maybe I'm going to go there later. Uh, it's very dangerous when someone is in politics, when he is not a leader. I mean, when he don't believe in the capacity to be someone who can bring positive influence to the community. I think um, politics is, a, a, is a, an area where leaders can go now to make uh, decisions which influence, have influence to a country or a community and, 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 and bring solutions to problems. I think um, it's difficult to say which one is influencing another, but I think uh, what starts before is much more the leadership capacity and, and the abilities to be able to manage a community where you go in politics. For example, when we talk about spiritual leadership, and, and for me, yes, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pastor in the church, but I know that my, my calling uh, is to serve the community and uh, to, to bring the community to be united and to, to work for the better of the community. And I think if it's that the politics, it starts when God created the first person and then say, go and, and um, lead the, the, the other creation and organize and manage and, and make the, 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 the world better than it was before. I mean, somehow we uh, contribute to organize using our uh, leadership skills and abilities to bring solutions. But I can conclude by saying the main issue in Africa is to have people who don't believe they are leaders, who don't believe mm. in their capacity to be leaders in politics. 
that can be a catastrophe. Mm. Perfect. Uh, so perfect. So but the end, the end goal is, uh, you know, you said something very important, and I want to bring it up. Like it's dangerous to have politicians who are not leaders. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's good. So that actually brings me to my next question: Is is Africa's leadership crisis a society problem or a political one? I want to go back to Ambassador Melia. For you, any politics, really politics, um, and you sit at African Union, you sit at um, United Nations Commission for Africa. You are the center of all this. Do you think is Africa's problem is a leadership crisis, a society one, a political one? What is it? Uh, it is actually both, uh, societal as well as. Um, is, 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 is political. Uh, and I'm saying that because um, Africa's current leadership crisis uh, is manifested by different uh, trends, uh, depending on who you are, or who you, who and uh, 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 where you are. So um, it also depends on who you talk to. And, and some people might argue that uh, Africa does not uh, really have a leadership problem. Uh, uh, I will also say that uh, some attributes of leadership that we have uh, have directly led to a trust deficit uh, in politics and leadership in our society. Um, the, the, the challenge, however, is the, how we marry authentic uh, behavior. Uh, mm -hmm. Authentic behavior, one that is uh, honest and able to acknowledge mistakes, and, and, and still be able to serve and be of service. Uh, because uh, in fact, you, you are a public servant who has promised uh, to provide services to the masses. So in many of our societies, problems such as poverty, homelessness, uh, gender inequality, healthcare, uh, unemployment, uh, um, they are on, uh, on a rampant. And then while on the political sphere, uh, 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 we are witnessing political problems such as lack of accountability, uh, uh, mm -hmm. corruption, abuse of power, uh, mm -hmm. lack of trust uh, and so forth. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, really, uh, um, even the most important one is also creating a, a conducive environment for the youth to succeed uh, uh, in politics, that's that's the summary that I could, I can. Okay. Give, yeah. Perfect. So it's a both a society and leadership crisis. Okay. How about you, Mister Dillon? Agree? What's your, what's your thoughts on that? I, I think, uh, yeah, I think I agree with what she she said, but somehow I'm I'm going to come back to, to what I think is the most. Uh, what we can see in general is that the main source of crisis in Africa is a, a, a bad understanding of what it is leadership. Like for example, I'm much more talking uh, or defending the servant leadership as model because we talk about leadership when we think about position, not service to the community where people mm -hmm. who are in the position, they feel they are leader because they are in position. And then, they think they need to be served by the community where they, they, they take control of all the resources uh, and then they don't uh, help or serve the community to be mm -hmm. um, developed. Like for example, I give an example now, like uh, most of the very stable countries in the world, mm -hmm. we, we don't know even their leaders. It's difficult to know who's the president of, of Switzerland or, or to know who's maybe the prime minister of Sweden or, uh, or those countries. We don't care about the names of the ones who are on the power because the system they have, uh, they have, um, have been built in a way they are serving the community. It's not very important to who is there in the position of leadership because the system is very strong. And I think uh, that understanding of what is leadership which is serving the community to bring the change and better transformation of the communities is, is where the main issue starts. And then it's going to create social problems because there's going to be 
people uh, putting, um, and I had uh, the, 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 the ethnic group, where they come from, or their political parties, not really to, to put uh, ahead what they are doing to, for the community, what they bring as a solution to the needs of their countries or the communities. Perfect. Uh, I think uh, you said uh, like which countries, the, the most effective countries, you don't know even their leaders. So it's uh, in most countries, it is the leaders who, who appear more than the institution. Uh, exactly. I think you, you coined something like creating institutions that outlast leaders, that are stronger than leaders. But I will do that, there's a debate on that between uh, building the strong institutions and uh, having strong men. Which one is which? Which one comes first? Which one comes last? I'll come off to that. But we are talking to young people and you, you, you have your people who have accomplished much, too much experience in leadership, in politics. What qualities of a leader, uh, of, of leaders in, from the African perspective? And I, I mean that in the sense that uh, we hear a lot of leadership here, but from the African perspective, what kind of leaders or qualities of leaders should be young leaders emulate or have? Or mistakes that are being done by the past by elders, what, can, what should we avoid? Um, I'll come to what we should avoid, but I think um, uh, great African leaders need to have uh, a strong willingness to be passionate uh, visionaries, uh, uh, um, they should have great clarity of purpose and, and, and should also have a clear sense of direction while leading the nations. Um, this means that it is important that uh, African leaders learn that continuous learning and, and listening is critical to development of, of, of their nations. Um, more than ever, African leaders uh, uh, need to realize also that mm. the 21st century uh, 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 anticipate um, the, 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 the anticipate a continuous change in all aspects, and, mm -hmm. and therefore uh, they need to be able to be alert enough mm -hmm. to deal with challenges that are coming to them uh, from all angles. Um, mm -hmm. So, so they, they continuously have to be alert. Um, with the youth blo blossoming now across mm -hmm. the continent mm -hmm. and, and most living in dire conditions due to high poverty rates, unemployment, uh, as well as leaders, uh, 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 the unemployment, leaders therefore need to, to, to possess genuine empathy uh, empathy towards the plight of the youth uh, and development uh, and develop sustainable uh, uh, solutions to uh, improve the living standards of, 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 of the youth. Uh, they also need to realize uh, uh, um, that empathy, uh, knowledge, and knowing when to are not the, uh, are the intergenerational buttons. Mm -hmm that will uh, keep Africa in line with the transformation. Uh, um, it, uh, it, you know, we are one point, uh, more than one billion people on the continent. So those, those uh, one billion people on the continent are aspiring uh, uh, to have that. Um, the other thing is also the ability to be able to prepare youth who look up to them to know uh, uh, how to continue uh, as well as when they, uh, particularly when they are no longer there. And, and to know that uh, after they are gone, the youth will be able to be self-reliant, self-sufficient, as well as resourceful and, and, and importantly, be able to redefine goals uh, if those goals do not align to, um, uh, aligned to that. So it, it is very important that we keep that. Um, the, the, the other I wanted to add is that um, uh, uh, um, 
I want to mention, I want to mention uh, 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 leaders of the previous generation were, uh, were of different caliber. Uh, uh, back then, perhaps uh, uh, due to the fact that um, Africa uh, was fighting to emancipate herself uh, from colonialism, the, the Pan-African leaders were robust. Uh, 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 these were Kwame Nkrumah, Julius Nyerere, we have Samora Michelle, we have Robert Mugabe, and our own Sam Nyoma of Namibia. So um, uh, just to name a few. So uh, some of these leaders' undoubted uh, success will go down uh, uh, as some of, of the most influential leaders in Africa and, and, and uh, that Africa have ever produced. Uh, mm -hmm. They all work towards a common purpose, and, mm -hmm. and, and there are people rely to be behind them. So, um, yeah, I think that, that's what I can Perfect. say. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And you, 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 it's, uh, you mentioned the, 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 the regime, the, the age group of Nyerere and something. They, these days, we only think about the Nyerere's. I don't know what happened after the Nyerere's. <laughs> we only think, but it's all right. We'll find out. How about you, Mr. Dio, then what's your take on that? What qualities of young leaders should not miss, you know, in actualizing the 21st century Africa? I think the, the first very important value we need to focus on is what we have as a common value in Africa is to be human or to be Ubuntu is one of the main, the value most of the African people uh, uh, believe is the one important value. We, 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 we are familiar to the leaders in politics. They just use power, but they don't care about humanity. They don't care about life, how to protect life, how to make sure uh, they, can, they have to do everything they can to, not, to, pro, to make sure there's no one who's going to be who died just because he's killed or just because uh, uh, the, 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 uh, there's no the sickness they can maybe fight against or things like that. That we should focus on to be human first because we, we, we see most of the time when we see our leaders, we think mm -hmm. about power, how they can take control, how they can, if they don't like you, they, they, they don't care if you're still alive or not, but somehow <laughs> we need to be human. We need to be... Uh, to make sure uh, the leaders are protecting everybody and make sure that everyone is safe, uh, even if it's someone who don't you don't agree with, but we can we protect we value life. Secondly, is uh, to serve, to be a servant. To be a servant is to uh, understand that the, mo the we'll see how a country is very very well uh, governed or managed when we see how the population is much more have his uh, a, a very good uh, um, uh, I can say life or how you can value the, the, the how the, the least person in the country is somehow secure have the minimum need for 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 living uh, not to see few people who are very wealthy and have the control or the resources but when we have a servant heart, they, when we mm. talk about, you just asked the question about someone like Nyerere. What we see in Nyerere was that attitude of to be a servant to, to, the, to the, his population. He was not looking to his power to get too much power. And in our country, when you see, we have been fighting between ethnic group for many, many years and killings mm. and problems in politics. We are neighbors with Tanzania. There's no uh, killings between ethnic groups. There are many, even more than Burundi. But because the, 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 the leaders who have been there for a long time, they try to show they don't build uh, their power around them, around their, yeah. their family, around what is in their political party only, that mm -hmm. can balance somehow and then bring people to be united and work together. The, we need leaders who are servant, who understand the most important thing is not to have too much power, but the most important is to have too much influence because you have served the maximum of your community and to give them a better life. The, 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 uh, the third uh, thing I can say in terms of, of, of values is to, 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 bring, uh, the, the, to, to bring young people to understand 
that they they have um, um, they have a potential, and they can unlock their potential uh, to be uh, the 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 engine for the, the development of their country because they can work hard. Uh, we need to change our um, education system where students are there just spend years, years just learning, but they are not producing. When we need leaders who understand that they should give um, an opportunity to young people, even if they are at school, but they can still working and add value to what they are doing and produce and make their country uh, quickly developed. I can just say the, the three things, but most very important thing, we need leaders who are human, who, are, who uh, work for Ubuntu, who value life. This is very important. And then who are serving the community, not serving themselves or their tribe or their family or their political parties. And then who right. empower young people and give them the possibility to unlock their potential. Perfect. Leaders who serve their societies, not their families, not their political party. Uh, some political parties are like another tribe. You know, they pay a lot of tribute to a political party than you know, actually. But we are talking about now the 21st century Africa. And the 21st century Africa, we can't deny out the question of geopolitics, you know, uh, in terms of speaking about African context, we don't deny the high influence of geopolitics and we find the geopolitical force actually has, at most cases, might have more force than the local politics. How can we shape young people to be aware of this from a young age? What qualities should they, should they possess in, in containing and uh, you know, uh, balancing the forces of geopolitics in order to become effective leaders because we want another generation to be you know, written out in the history that uh, they exist a generation in the 21st century. But we always speak about the how many years ago, 60 years, Nyerere. I don't know what happened in between from Nyerere up to now, I don't know what happened. <laughs> so how should we maximize that? Um. I think uh, uh, this is now where one has to transform the youth, um, transform the youth to become leaders. Um, uh, how do we maximize that? Uh, we need to give uh, ample opportunities to the youth to lead while uh, we are still alive or while uh, our older generation is still alive. Um, and and, and I, I can, I can uh, uh, give you an example of in the case of Namibia where the ruling party have now put in place, uh, uh, um, the ruling party have now put in place uh, uh, some measures to, to, um, to empower the youth. And, and, and this resulted in, in, in the president appointing a very young deputy minister for information mm -hmm. and broadcasting. And recently also appointed or nominated a very young uh, member of parliament. Actually, she's the youngest because she's now mm -hmm. 22 and mm -hmm. the deputy minister is, is 23 years old. Mm -hmm. and, and in the whole of parliament, I think there are six of them now uh, that are young. Uh, 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 the deputy minister was exposed uh, at a very young age because of the of the systems that were put in place by the by the speaker uh, 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 who, who created a a, 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 a a call it a children's parliament and and, and uh, she got exposed to be the speaker of the children's parliament and thereafter she also became the the mayor of the junior uh, uh, um, council of the of the city of Venduk. So, and 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 even as we speak now, we have a very young, um, vibrant mayor of the capital city of Venduk who is only thirty three years old. So, uh, uh, and he's leading the biggest city in in in, in the country. Uh, and I think those those opportunities need to be created for young uh, 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 leaders to go into those positions and, and, and let the elders observe 
and uh -huh. see how they, they, they are performing and guide them while they are still alive. That's, that's, that's what I would like to say. Um, oh, yeah. you. Good, good. How about you, Mr. Diana? What do you think about that? Uh, I think uh, we uh, need to know that now uh, the, 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 everything has changed in, in the world because we have we don't still have those uh, borders of countries where, you know, like, for example, uh, I don't know who is following where they're coming from. And then like uh, three, four years ago, it was not impossible to have this kind of conversation with people from yeah. different countries, different uh, backgrounds. But now the, every, the world have changed and there's so many new um, technologies and influences. Uh, we should not develop that thinking of what was happening during the Cold World War or, 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 or things like that, so, uh, yeah. who, who are pro-USA, who are pro-Europe. It's not difficult to create that um, uh, kind of uh, limitation of saying you cannot have ac access to what is happening in Moscow in the same time in, 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 in Washington, D.C., or everything like that. We need a, a new generation of leaders who understand that the world become as a kind of a, a village mm -hmm. and we, we, we should not spend time to create enemies, but we need to open and to create much more the relationship and to support one another, to learn from one another and then to yeah. build uh, um, our communities knowing that we need others, other, other border, the other outside the, the continent. It's mm -hmm. very important that the young leaders uh, who are planning to have influence their communities, mm -hmm. they, they don't go back to read the old books of what <laughs> happened yeah. in 60s or 70s. Uh, it's, not, it's not about that, but now uh, is to be adapted to what is happening now and to see how they can take advantage of that. But the most important thing, and then what I'm, I can emphasis on that, is we should not create enemies. We don't have time for enemies. Just try to, to see what do we have to give to the world. Uh -huh. We are in a small country, Burundi, people say that it's a very poor country in the world and everything like that. But I'm very convinced that we have things to give to the rest of the world. They need something we have. In terms, it cannot be only minerals, but can also be the thinking, the, the way uh, we can uh, give some ideas, which can maybe bring uh, a new way of, um, uh, of, of managing or organizing the economy of the world. But I think it's very important to understand we, we, we should not uh, lose our time creating enemies and try to see who is we, who, with me or not, because now we have the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's an issue everywhere in the world. We need to work together. And who can Absolutely. do this? I hope that one. I think uh, uh, the young generation should focus on what they have to give to the world and then where they need, what they, they can receive from others and create much more uh, partnership, uh, networking together, and then uh, leave that kind of mindset of feeling, oh, uh, this is my enemy, I cannot. Um, if you need Chinese, you need Chinese. If you need to work with uh, people from Europe, you need, it depends what you need. Mm -hmm. We should not develop um, the, 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 the same mindset used to have our fathers long time ago, because the world was limited. Uh, in exact what you can do in your borders. But now you can cross the borders without having a visa. Someone, you are in Burundi now because you're listening to me, but you didn't yeah. pay the visa to come in. And then I'm talking to you. Uh, the young people <laughs> yeah. need to, yeah. to adapt themselves and what is happening now. And then to use the technology to, to see how they can network and they can learn from others. Perfect. Uh, great, great submissions. I, 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 I learned a lot from you. The issue of networking, I think learning beyond borders, and the issue of not creating enemies. Uh, there are people who have generational hate, so they pass it to the other. They, their children also pass it. So the, the, and the African Union and the, um, the African Free Continental Trade Area and the 
mentioned something about maximizing interests, you know, looking for interest, which is very key because as people correlate, they are looking for interest. Very good submissions. Uh, one more last question, and we will open up to the audience. The, I, I feel they have burning questions too, or submissions to make. Why should young people embrace transformational leadership from the African perspective? Because one person said that poverty is the absence of leadership. I don't know how true it is, but they say poverty is the absence of leadership. And a, a person I respect on leadership, Maxwell, say that everything lies and falls on leadership. Uh, so wealth, power, prosperity falls on leadership. Poverty, Barbara, you know, uh, you know, backwardness falls on leadership. Why should young people, most of the African young people, embrace a new style of leadership? Um. You know, uh, uh, um, transformational leadership uh, causes change in individuals and yeah. in uh, social systems. And, and I would want to answer that question by relating uh, uh, my personal story, uh, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started working, um, I started at a very young age and, and I started as a private secretary. Um, and immediately after finishing my school, my high school, but then two years down the line, uh, I, I decided to, to go and, um, and further my studies. Um, when, when I completed my studies, I was lucky to get a job immediately, uh, uh, but just imagine it was immediately, but it was a job of a private secretary while I studied something else. Uh, I took up the position uh, uh, with the aim to get into the system and work hard to reach the top. Um, because I majored in financial accounting, two years into the position, I decided to, to request for a transfer, uh, which I was successful to get. And, and uh, because I wanted to reach the top and mm -hmm. I, I inspired myself time and again uh, to work hard and, and to take up every opportunity that I get. Um, I went through various ranks until I reached where I am today. But throughout my journey, I, I became a better and inspire and I became better in inspiring others. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing my story because I see youth today giving mm -hmm. up very quickly. Um, you should embrace transformational leadership uh, uh, as well as, uh, uh, because it will allow you to grow. I, I chose someone uh, uh, in the leadership at that time to, to be my mentor. Uh, it is important to identify mentors. Um, yes. Uh, 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 it's not always that they will come and say, I will mentor you, but mm -hmm. you should also take the initiative to identify somebody that you would like uh, him or her to mentor you. So I spoke to him about my dreams uh, and, and he assisted me. Um, and I think at this point in time, I would like to say, you should not be afraid. Um, afraid to be a team leader. You should not be afraid uh, 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 to take up, uh, um, you should not be afraid to take up uh, 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 difficult tasks uh, that are coming your way. Uh, 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 this will just improve yourself. So literally uh, uh, it's sacrifices that you have to go through uh, uh, because it is for the greater good. Um, and also uh, um, know what you want. Yeah. develop your own strategies and perform at the highest level. Give your best at all level when you are serving. Um, and always remember that, um, uh, uh, I, I always uh, tell the story that when we were all growing up, uh, mm -hmm. we learned something new every day on a daily basis from the friends that we were playing with or our siblings that we were playing with. Um, we taught each other uh, uh, um, 
the good uh, and positive behaviors. And, and we formed a culture out of that. So transformational leadership is, 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 is the same. It's the continuation of those values that, that we have learned when, during our formative years. So mm -hmm. I can only encourage everyone on the group um, to embrace uh, transformation, transformative uh, transformation, and 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 um, because you already know some of these things, it's just now yes. to set the ball high, uh, and and also throughout um, youth development. That's that's where I have learned uh, about youth development and, and mentorship, and and I have done so uh, throughout uh, my 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 career. Uh, I continue to do so where I can and, and where it is needed. Oh, oh we lost her. Okay. And I lost her, but she, she will come in late maybe. Yeah. So uh, we'll continue with Mr. Gilden. What do you think? Why should we, why should young people embrace leadership? I um, leadership, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, someone uh, who really inspired me a long time ago uh, is uh, um, Gandhi from, from, from India. Oh, you're he back. Said, you, sorry to, to, oh, she's back. I'm sorry to interrupt that you, you are, you are making us, you, you are mute. Unmute. Me? You, you, you don't hear me? I'm not sure what happened. I, I'm, so, I, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. But what I was saying is yes. that at the AU, they have a youth volunteer program. Uh, yes. It's just because of COVID now. But every year, they take on 300 youth of, from Africa, from all over Africa, every country represented. And you are placed in all African countries where there is an AU office, depending on, on on, on, on your qualifications and you do not need to have experience as long as you have a first degree, uh, you can apply. It is all paid for, by the way. Uh, 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 you get a stipend, they pay your ticket where you go and they pay a ticket back for you to go back home and a settling in allowance. So um, African youth should make use of that opportunity. I, I know that many of the youth out there do not know about the program, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, it, is, it, is, it is available and, and, and you get a one year uh, youth volunteer program with the AU. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. That's you know, very good information. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Dio, then, uh, Okay, you can continue with your submission. Yes. Um, um, Gandhi said that um, uh, be the change you want to see in the world. When we talk about transform transforming uh, leadership, uh, it's not about uh, the, some the others need to change. It's the first of all to understand you are the change. You are mm -hmm. the one who need to, to see in your character, in your values, how you can bring a change in the community, in the community where you are, and you can bring that influence, but based on what you are able to do and how um, you understand your calling and how you can uh, bring, uh, create a community around what you believe. I think uh, transforming and servant leadership is what we need for the moment for the young people to understand uh, always, uh, most of the time in Africa, when there's a change needed, People will say there are others who create programs. Uh, they just want we want to remove the others because they are they are the ones who are creating problems. But yes. you, with the transforming leadership, is saying no. I'm the one who's going to be the change. I'm going to do to be the one who's going to change and then be the model. Others will be following, and then they can mm -hmm. bring the transformation in the community. I think young people in Africa need to understand. Uh, the change we need in Africa will not come from outside Africa. The change we need to see in our countries is not going to come from another country, so powerful or not. It's uh -huh. how we value what God has given to our continent, what we have inside of us, and start to develop that. 
uh, as she was sharing the testimony briefly, I can say, um, 20 years ago, I was a sweet kid. I was, I was on sweet. I lost my, my, my parents during the, the, the civil war in my country. There was no house to go to and everything stopped. I was not able to continue my education. Uh, I think four years ago, I was not able even to speak in English like I, I'm doing now. Uh, because I'm much more French speaking and Kirundi. But uh, I, I remember being a time where everything was, was uh, finished. I lost everything for me and there was no hope for the future. But when I realized the potential God had put inside of me, I said, oh, I cannot stay here. I just, it's possible to come from where I am in these very hard conditions and to be someone with influence. Uh, you can't believe that someone 20 years ago was homeless on the street mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. be uh, and, and, and a candidate during the, the, the presidential elections. I have took street kids from the streets of Budrimura and then take them to play the World Cup in Rio, in Brazil, in uh, Moscow for the World Cup. And we are preparing to go to Qatar with the street kids because we want to show them uh, even if you are on the street for uh, today, maybe in the next 20 years, you'll be someone who can bring transformation there in the, in the community. You are not vulnerable, but you can understand that we have abilities you can uh, use to be someone, somebody who can bring an influence in the community. I want to tell the young people, uh, those who are listening now, or maybe who you'll be talking to, uh, we have what we need to really bring the change we want in our communities, in our countries. We don't need to go to take that from outside. I'm, I'm traveling a lot. I go to different con continent countries, but I believe uh, that my, to be in my country, even called the poorest country or all the bad thing about the country, mm. I can't expect that the change will come from outside. I need to be yes. there. I need to sacrifice. I need to contribute to see the, the, the transformation come from me and my friends and my community we are building together and then bring that transformation for the whole country. Uh, I think uh, what I want to say in one word is just to say, your character, your values is what is going to bring the change in your environment, your family, in your communities, and even in your country. But unlock that potential you have inside of you, believe in what you, 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 you have as a capacity, don't keep thinking that will come from Canada, from USA or other, other, other countries. Stop to try to go to say, oh, if I, I uh, go to Europe, my, my, I'll be a uh, uh, happy person or I'm going to have the happiness. No, the happiness is inside of you. If you don't have it now, you don't want to have it because you are in another country. It's very important to see how to value what we have, to value our countries, and then uh, to serve the countries and to bring the transformation starting by us, not, not starting by changing others, because the others will be changed if we value um, what God has put inside of us. Perfect. Awesome. Wow. What stories uh, from both from Ambassador Maria and from Mr. Dioden uh, 20 years ago, a street kid, and now a former presidential candidate, but not to just say, that could be just a title, but the lives he has transformed speaks more than um, it's just a mess. Uh, starting as a young private secretary, not the ambassador. So all the things I get here is building you, like you so knowing what you want. And there is this, uh, I call it a fallacy or something, or mystery. You find the young blaming the old. Oh, African leaders, African leaders, terrible, terrible. And after the years, as they go older, older, they get into those power uh, positions of power. The young ones also blame them, uh, African leaders. So you find the generation is lost in blame game, compromise, mediocrity, ignorance, poverty as a cycle. But if young leaders will take the responsibility like we want to see this we are from different continents or i mean from different countries we can't be the change in madagascar be the change in Burundi, be the change in cape Verde, be the change in ethiopia being changing in, in, in namibia if and if we have the networking 
us, the African Rebirth Networks, young people, we can create a critical mass of young leaders, transformation leaders, where we stand up to even all things. But it comes to, it starts from within with us. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, I learned a lot myself. Um, I believe people have questions, have contributions. I want to open it up to the audience and ask you many questions. I believe they have a lot of questions. I see one already, one hand. Yes, Sibo. Uh, so we'll have a bunch of questions. Keep in mind that we only have 30 minutes remaining. So I wanted to keep it very short, informative, and pull straight to the point. Okay, now start with Sibo. Uh, thank you so much. I will be very quick. Uh, uh, you, you told us that the happiness is inside of us. And thank you, Mr. Nahima and Madam Ambassador. Thank you for reminding us to keep learning and evolve. I have a question. You mentioned the importance of mentorship and how to, you know, to keep practicing to be the change we want to see in our entourage. So if we want you as our mentors, of course, we are so many, it won't be possible to have a one-on-one, -on -one, but can we have like a, a way to connect with you so you can ha give us like some mentorship, let's say once a month or once every three months, if it's possible? That was my question, thank you. Perfect, good question. Um, we'll take a, like three, then we'll answer them, yes. Yes, Angelina, then hi, Yabanesh. Hi everyone, this is Angelina Steven Van from South Sudan, proudly African. Uh, my question goes to the two uh, facilitators. Yeah, proudly African. <laughs> my question goes to the two facilitators. How can we truly um, identify uh, who is a leader and who is not a true leader? Because nowadays we have a lot of leaders in court and uh, we really want to know who is a true leader and who is not a true leader. So I'd like the facilitators to help me differentiate this. Thank you. Perfect, a good question. Yeah, Benesh. All right, thank you very much. It was a great presentation and a privilege to listen to both of you. My question is about where do we start? Like now we have to change things in Africa, in our country. Is it bottom up? Do we have to wait for the society to change? Oh, sorry, I, I'm just turning my... Do we have to wait for the society to change? So that they will have a voice in the meaningful one when they vote and everything so that we can change the country or the continent? Or is it top bottom? We have to have a leader like Moses who will lead us to where we need to go. So which which one is the better way or which one do we have to choose if we have to choose one? Thank you. Okay, perfect. I'll leave that to, to our panelists to answer that. You can, I hope everyone was noting down and I can remind you the questions, so yeah. Um, sorry, sir. Yes, you have a question. We'll take yes, three, yes. three, you can, uh, you can ask, uh, okay, go ahead and ask. Uh, we'll take a few questions that people don't forget. Okay, my question is that um, she, the madam, madam did mentioned about the opportunity that you would get as in, is in a form of mentorship where you were trained and the like. Um, my question here is that, how are we going to get that opportunity and where can we get it? And like my call um, participant just said, um, how best can we link her to become a member? Thank you. Thank you. So I'll let her answer can that. She just, and, can she just repeat the last part of her question? I couldn't hear sure. properly. Sure. Uh, can you repeat it? Okay, the last part of my statement is that how best can we link her as in how best can we get contact to her as a mentor or anyone that is just like her that is to guide us through the leadership training. Okay. Okay, I'll let Her Excellency answer that and Mr. Deodini will also answer the questions. I guess they were, they were not personal, they are all for all panelists. Mm -hmm. uh, the, thank you, thank you very much for the questions. Um, I think the question from Sibo uh, uh, and the one from Manana uh, uh, were almost similar uh, with regard to, Sibo uh, was asking whether I'm available uh, 
uh, once a month or, or so for, for, for mentorship. Um, I'll gladly do that. Uh, I, I do not have a problem in doing that. Uh, 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 so um, you can, um, I will, I will put, uh, I will put uh, uh, the, 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 I will put my, my email in the, in the chat box uh, 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 after I finish and then you can contact me and then we can link up and see how, how we can take it off. It's, it's absolute, it's going to be a pleasure for me to, to do that. Uh, and I think uh, what Manana was talking about the, the um, AU volunteer, uh, it's normally, Please, please um, look at the AU website. It's um, uh, uh, careers at uh, careers.au.int. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the AU always uh, advertise uh, um, always advertise the when 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 the openings or when they are recruiting uh, uh, these these youth volunteers. Um, uh, so uh, just uh, check it out, and, and 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 you can actually when you get to the website, you can click on there's a button that as that uh, that will allow you to get uh, posts uh, whenever they put new notices on. Um, what uh, I, I'm saying, Ficato, because I didn't get the first name. Uh, she 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 asked about. Um, whether change uh, should be bottom up or top down. Um, yeah. You know, um, it, 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 it's both. It's bottom up and, and, and top down because the top cannot do without the bottom. And, 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 and it is very important that even when you are at the bottom, you are still a leader. You still lead the people uh, uh, that are under you. You still lead uh, even the top people. Don't forget that even if you are at the lowest, lowest level, you supply, you provide information to your leaders. And by providing that information by, to them, you are also leading. So do not, um, it's, 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 it, it really, sometimes it depends on the structures uh, so much. And, and, and then we forget that, that even the people at the bottom, they are also leaders. So, so you find that some organizations now, uh, um, some organizations now are changing their structures so that it can go up and down, uh, including uh, uh, political parties, by the way. That's why most of the political parties now are also creating youth wings. And those youth wings are the ones that are feeding uh, 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 the, 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 the top leadership as to uh, uh, what needs to be done. So make sure that your voice, are, your voice is heard. It doesn't matter at which level you are. And I think Angelina, um, how can you identify who is a true leader? Um, that one is quite a difficult one, but um, you will always know, as they say, um, a leader leads and allow, um, you know, guide, uh, uh, um, uh, a leader guides their, uh, his or her staff members to, to, to do things and not only guides, but also helps. Uh, um, I would for one, not want to say do A, B, C, D, knowing very well that you do not know how to do it. So literally me as a leader, I should be able to do it. I should be able to show it to you. And then I leave you to continue doing it and guide you along the way until you succeed in, in, in achieving that. That's, that will be my responses, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Um, that was very good questions. Uh, maybe uh, not going to go to all details because she's really give very clear answers. For Sibo, I can say the, the same thing. Um, I have uh, my foundation, which is DNF, Student Ahmana Foundation, which is helping in terms of coaching young people in different uh, sectors, it can be locally here or, or uh, uh, abroad, um, but what I'm going to do is just I'm going to put the WhatsApp number for the contact of someone who want to have mentorship or communication or ask a question 
that I'm going to be someone who's going to, to, to reply to that. If we need to have one-on-one -on -one conversation, sometimes there's no, uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm traveling a lot, but somehow I'll make sure I can find some time to answer some of the questions. Uh, but at the same time, um, Yes, we also need to learn from you. And then if there's something you can teach young people in Burundi from where you are, uh, we can invite you to some of the conversation we do online. That would be great. Um, for the question about who, how to see who is a leader or not, uh, it's, I can simply say that um, each one, each individual can be a leader. But the only thing is someone start to be a leader the, the time uh, he have a clear vision and then have people following, have followers who believe in that vision. This is what I can say. And he can create a community. That community can be an organization or can be just people who have a conversation like we are doing today. But uh, he have a clear vision. People are following that vision and he can create a community around that. It can even be just a business or something like that. But it's someone when you see, you know where he's going, and then you have people who follow uh, what he's, uh, the, the vision he have, and they can join um, and then support or contribute to what he's doing. And then for the question about uh, the, the leaders, the, 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 the change need to be from top or from down, as she said, it need to be both. Um, if the, 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 the Nobotan people are together, but they can't find someone who's going to lead them, they can't bring a change. They need to be someone who's going to, to have to be the voice of this, the people who are together, they want to bring that change. And also if someone who is on top doesn't have a support from the bottom, there's an issue. He needs some, somehow to have a community of people who believe in him, or believe in the vision, support um, the, the, the person. I think when we need to have a, a change, we need to have, yes, someone who's taking the leadership and have a clear vision and also have uh, people who believe in that and then can be together and to bring that transformation. But if there is one missing, this, the transformation is not possible. In what I, can, in what I have uh, experienced in life, it's good to have a leader who is on top, but at the same time to have a community who supports the, the leader. I think this is the questions uh, maybe I remember now. Can you Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we have three hands, and I think we will end on those ones. Then uh, we will call it a day. Yes, I see Tunbisea, Akeru, and uh, Lont. Then I think Fatumata, you asked, right? You asked a question? Okay. I missed you asked. Okay. Sorry, Akel, can you go ahead and ask? Hmm? I did ask a question. I just wanted to add on, but because other people want to ask. Oh, yeah. Give other people. Oh, yes. You. No problem. Perfect. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Tidasia Akwero. Um, probably African as well. My question is to both panelists, and it's about it's on leadership accountability. Uh, Mr. Enoch, you had mentioned something about how the generations keep blaming previous generations for what they should or should or should have done. And I believe that that is a way of the current generation trying to uh, create accountability or to seek accountability. And if you look at the, the situation in African leadership, if you find that mostly it's the international community that keeps African leaders in check. So my question is basically, how does Africa keep its leaders accountable and are there institutions and platforms apart from the EA, uh, AU and in different countries where you find that every leader that comes up and everything that they do, how are they kept accountable? Thank you. Perfect, good question. Lawrence? Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much to their excellencies, Miss Emily and Mr. Nahimana. I have two questions. Um, they mentioned something about uh, strong institutions, that they are very important in leadership. My question is, what is uh, African Union doing uh, in building strong institutions? Because it is evident that in Africa, we have a lot of strong leaders, but not strong institutions. What can be done to strengthen those institutions? 
my second question uh, is with um, the, the youth, uh, especially in capacity building. We know that they talk a lot uh, about mentor mentorship and but when it comes to actual implementation you find that youth they have vision they have passion but they really lack the capacity they really lack the um the the resources to which they can build on their passion so what other um programs that uh, africa can do to strengthen uh, the youth capacity building. Thank you. Good questions. Okay. Um, I'll let Madam Ambassador answer that, and then Dioden, if you, whatever you want, Dioden, do Mr. Dioden, do you want to come in first or her first? You can. Whoever is ready. She can come first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> first, yeah. uh, thank you. Um, the, the, the question by Theo Darcia, um, leadership accountability. Um, how does Africa keep uh, its leaders accountable? It's quite a tricky one uh, because um, uh, accountability, is it um, accountability now uh, for, for, for leaders? Uh, is embedded in the in the member states constitutions, um, and um, uh, yes, uh, uh, African Union is there. But um, I think at this point in time, uh, I I can only talk about the um, what is it? Um, um, I forgot the name, sorry. <laughs> um, be, be, because um, it's, it's, it, the, 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 the country itself um, have to be responsible for, for, for uh, the leader's uh, 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 performance. And, and, and saying that it's, it's, it's because uh, the constitutions of each country makes provision for that. And it's difficult for, it's, it's an individual state, it's the sovereign state, and it's very difficult for the AU to go in and, and, and tell a sovereign nation or a, 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 a president uh, that you are not performing. Of course, uh, uh, within the AU, uh, uh, there are there are uh, uh, organizations that have been established. Uh, we call them the AU organs. Uh, we have the organ on 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 corruption. We have the African Court. We have the Commission on 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 Human Rights. Uh, they are all there uh, to 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 be. Um, uh, watchdogs of, of, of what countries are doing and countries are required to report on, on, on the implementation of their protocols. But then you find that countries, some countries have not ratified those protocols. And, and, and that is also a sovereign decision by a nation uh, to decide whether they want to uh, ratify the protocol or, on anti-corruption. So uh, in that case, if, if a, a member state is not party to the protocol, it makes it even more difficult. Uh, 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 but there are procedures, uh, the decisions that the African Union takes, um, member states have to, um, to report on, on, on the implementation of, of, of those decisions. Um, Manana, you were asking about uh, what is the AU doing in building strong institutions. Um, this, as I said, uh, the African Union have uh, created various organs to assist member states. Uh, for instance, the latest one is is the African Continental Free Trade Area. That 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 one is not only uh, is assisting member states. Uh, how to trade within uh, African African countries? Uh, you have NEPAD, uh, Oda NEPAD, which yeah. which is assisting member states um, how to, in terms of of, of 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 resource mobilization. So there are different uh, 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 organs within the African Union that uh, actually. Uh, 
uh, respond to different um, fields or, 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 or aspects uh, or institutions of, of, that are within member states and, 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 and through that also build capacity. Uh, and I think the one that recently is also very prominent is the Africa, Africa uh, um, uh, CDC, the, uh, the, the, the Africa CDC, that during this pandemic provided so much training to, 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 to member states uh, how to deal with the pandemic that we are currently faced with. And also um, uh, recently we, we learned that when, when, the, when the pandemic broke out, not, not many countries had a testing capacity. And, and, mm -hmm. and uh, as of today, the whole of Africa, all the African countries have got testing capacities. So there are different uh, um, different uh, uh, institutions within the African Union assisting member states. It is just up to the member states to take, uh, 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 yeah. to take the assistance that is available. In terms of capacity building, you, you are asking, you are saying that youth lack capacity and what other programs can Africa do to strengthen you, the youth? Um, not only, um, is the African Union very strong on, on, on youth capacity building, but also asking member states to create, uh, uh, to create uh, uh, youth uh, capacity programs. Um, yeah. You will note uh, uh, in some countries now, you also have a ministry of youth that, will, that is taking care of uh, youth capacity uh, programs and youth programs uh, in general. Political parties have got youth wings now, and, and, and um, uh, even at the AU, there is a program on, on, on youth, uh, youth development. So, so they are there, maybe they are not visible, uh, uh, but they are there, and I'm sure, I'm sure in your country there must be some youth capacity building programs also or youth development programs. Uh, within Namibia, we have a Ministry of Youth. Uh, there is the National Service Programs for for youth. Uh, each political party have got a youth wing, um, and we also have the National Youth uh, Council uh, that is uh, funded by, by by government. And I think that is what we probably have to do to call on all governments to provide funding for youth programs or youth organizations, because sometimes it's, no, it's not uh, worth to have a youth, um, youth uh, 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 um, it's, not, it's not worth to have a youth uh, uh, um, program or youth uh, uh, entity, yet there is no funds available. So by getting government funding, you, you, you ensure that those programs that the youth are coming up are continuously funded or continuously going uh, on and, and, and capacitating the youth. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, now, Ms. Sadiodane. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Uh, There's a very good question, which is not easy to answer about our accountability. Uh, maybe Madame Chitra, she, she, she answered in, in her position also working with the African Union. But I think um, most of leaders in our countries, they need young people, uh, especially when it's a time for elections. It's very important that the young people should be involved, even in maybe in political parties or create a kind of movement and network to the level when they can be um, considered when it's time to go back to them and ask them for votes or help them for to be in the position of leadership. That can be a way young people can also bring their leaders to be accountable. They can, uh, because they know they, uh, at, at the end of the day, the young people are still a majority in our country. And when they, 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 they are involved in political party or uh, in other civil, civil society organizations, they can find a position where they can bring their leaders at a certain level to be accountable. Uh, I'm not talking about the, this uh, international organizations, but at the same time, if you cannot do that directly, try to keep, be closer to the people who are, uh, so, for example, for the MPs who are in your parliament, 
who may be going to ask your questions to the leaders when they go to their apartment. It's good to know that maybe in your circle of organization or association, try to have one MP or two MPs. You are sure they can um, channel your questions to the, uh, to the House of Parliament or, uh, or the Senate. But it's, it's, not, it's a way, maybe um, an indirect way to, be, to ask the leaders to be accountable. Uh, but uh, the way she asked the question, I think it's still not easy for um, Africa to have a kind of force which will come to being our leaders to be accountable to. But um, uh, young people in the country can ha somehow have a way when they can bring their, their, their leaders to be accountable and then to think twice when they have to make decision for their country. Uh, I think um, this is my, what I try to give as an answer, um, but uh, I know there's no very strong structures in Africa or outside the continent can bring our leaders to be accountable to them. Um, other questions were much more uh, for African Union, uh, but in terms of uh, capacity building and resources, I always encourage young people to say, to think there's a possibility to develop your own resources to build uh, the build capacity of the people in maybe organization or uh, around you. And then what is happening now is a kind of capacity building uh, when people can invite an ambassador from the uh, African Union or another leader who can come and then talk to them, use what you have, uh, even if it's not, they're not very strong structures international who come to help you, but make sure you can build your own resources to equip the people, the young people in your organization or around you. Yeah, this is what I can try to give as a, an answer to, as well to questions. I wish I would be speaking in French, but uh, I have to speak in English. It's really hard for me. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Nahimana, Ambassador Emilia. Uh, there are many questions. Of course, people still have more questions, but if we take more questions, we'll, we'll spend a whole day here, and which is not good for our health, for our mental health. So we want to end here. I just want to uh, ask, uh, Ambassador Melia and Mr. Dioden to give a short conclusive remark uh, on what really the young people should do. I know you've been answering them, but your short final remarks. And mm -hmm. uh, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I really uh, want to thank you for, for, for uh, inviting me to this platform. Um, and uh, also allowing my deputy, Rodney, I see he have locked yes. in, yes. And, and my colleague in Geneva, Julia. Uh, yes. Unfortunately, Julia left, uh, she sent me a text that she's having connection problems and she left yes. the room. Uh, but I wanted to say, Julia is one of our very young uh, ambassadors, uh, Namibian yes. ambassador in, in Geneva. And, yes. and, and she has a daunting task, uh, uh, um, to, 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 to do so that that just just shows you that you know hard work do pay off uh, you do get recognized and and so on uh, and I really want to end by saying uh, getting a job these days is extremely difficult um, and I know it is frustrating the youth uh, by going through uh, 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 going through university and still struggling to get a job. What I would like to advise is that volunteer, volunteer sometimes work. Um, and I'm saying sometimes work because uh, while I was at parliament, I was, I was uh, confronted with that by a youth, a young uh, graduate from school and, and uh, she volunteered her job for free. But it is difficult to, to say, okay, we do have the position, but you know, you need so much experiences and so on. But if somebody comes and provide free services, uh, it just tells you what type of a person that is. And, and uh, to tell you the truth, we ended up appointing uh, her 
and 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 as we are speaking now she actually is one of uh, our diplomats uh, somewhere in europe so uh, uh, and and it's where one as a leader you also learn to see uh, that there are youth that are really committed and and want to to work and because she got tired of applying for jobs and so and so and then she decided to offer her services for free so uh, it's not easy though also to provide services for free but i'm sure those who are going to um to 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 accept your your offer will be uh will have a heart uh to at least uh, uh give you something small while uh, trying to find your feet so thank you again and i'm i see i'm getting a lot of emails already i will definitely read them and we will keep in touch thank you thank you thank you excellent thank you yeah, I also want to thank you so much for giving the, me this opportunity to be part of this uh, uh, very, very um, important conversation and uh, also to know many people. I'm very happy to meet with uh, Ambassador uh, Emilia. Uh, we don't know much about Namibia from uh, our side here in Africa and then in Burundi. <laughs> Uh, which uh, now uh, you're going to put on my list in one of the country to visit as soon as, as now they have young leaders in their country. I don't know if she maybe should help for me to be able to make that, to make that kind of contact and see the young people leading in their country. And then also uh, I know there are so many young people from different countries I've been following. It's good to somehow to be connected and uh, to, be, to encourage one another and to see how we can build a better Africa. Uh, the very few words I can say, uh, there is a hope for Africa. There is a hope, there's a, a new generation of young leaders who are now start to understand they don't need to wait until they become old uh, people to be able to bring a change, a transformation in, the, in their, their countries. Try to learn how to, um, uh, yes, to be the change you want to see by, building your uh, capacities and then to, 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 to value uh, your continent, your country, where you come from, and then to network with others in our different other countries. And then together we can uh, build a better Afri Africa for uh, future generations. Uh, thank you so much. And then I think it's not the last time maybe uh, we'll meet you and talk to yeah. you. Of Keep course. In of course, thank you so much, Your Excellencies. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. You've been the next, the, the next one is going to have it in French. <laughs> yes, <laughs> trust me, I'll, I'm going to polish my French style from both <laughs> okay. something this serious, more deeper. Good. So thank you so much. I'm really humbled by your submission and you taking your precious time. Uh, you've been saying that leadership is, you know, what, what I think it's you, what you say that, uh, if I remember well, that watching old people, you know, giving opportunities to young people and watching old, the old people watching them. And I think you, you are doing the same thing. You are passing the knowledge, the experience to young people. And this is the type of leaders we want. So we are very grateful. It's our exquisite delight to have you. So thank you very much. Takeaways. I was writing takeaways. Of course, we had many, but number one, leadership is self-discovered. It's not a donation, so you have to donate yourself, self-discovery. Number two, if you want to get higher, you take the first opportunity. She, both of them shared their you know, life experiences, how they went from A to B to C and where they are now. Two is networking. The world has changed so much. So if you are going to embrace the connectivity of the 21st century and maximize the opportunities of the 21st century Africa, networking has to be top notch. So that's why we encourage you to get connected to, the, to, to their peers, to get connected to the mentors, to peers who can inspire you to dream more. Don't connect to, to many people who won't add value to you, I think. Uh, number, number five or four, Change starts with you. Change with you. And change starts from here. 
Uh, I see many people saying accountability is very serious. No, it starts from now, from this Zoom meeting, it starts from now. Because tomorrow, if it starts today, tomorrow you're going to be a president, you're not going to be frightened to fire your minister because of corruption. But if you compromise now, I guarantee you, you compromise more because compromise has a lot of interest to protect. So you must, we must start now as we journey for the change we want. So thank you very much. As we say that leadership lies and falls. I mean, uh, society cannot rise beyond the character of its leaders. Africa cannot rise when leaders are in zigzag, when leaders are not inspiring, when we don't take responsibility, when we don't take accountability. So it's our hope and desire that the African Rebirth family, uh, the trainings we give, that we are raising leaders who are going to inspire and uh, hold accountable to what they, they stand for and for our countries. We need a new generation, we need new prosperity and a little bit of style of leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sometimes I'm sick and tired of every time, we are always on the wrong history. Uh, we, are not, we are always on the wrong history. Why? We need a new change. We need a new style of leadership. If it, if it is to uproot the old one, let us uproot it with strength and take it out because we need new leaders. So thank you very much. Uh, long live Africa. Thank you very much. Have a, long, a, a blessful weekend, everyone. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The end of the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Uh, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you. Enjoy your Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So and, uh, yeah. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs>